I am so glad you're here because today we're going to be learning about alkyne alkylation. This is one of the most powerful tools in an organic chemist toolbox because it provides an opportunity to extend carbon chains. This is a non-trivial feature in organic chemistry because as we begin to perform synthesis, we need to be able to make larger and larger molecules. And we can generate a nucleophilic alkyne which can do a substitution reaction with an alkyl halide to extend that carbon chain. The first step in alkyne alkylation is actually the deprotonation step. Let's consider for a moment a regular alkyl chain versus an alkene. The pKa of these hydrogens located at this carbon position is around 50. So the pKa value is around 50, which means that these hydrogens are not very acidic and therefore not very likely to be deprotonated by a base. As we increase the S character involved in the carbon attached to those hydrogens, like in that of an alkene, we increase the acidity by lowering the pKa. So the pKa for these carbon hydrogen atoms is around 44. And notice Notice that as we lower the pKa, we're making more and more acidic protons. Now let's consider for a moment the terminal hydrogen on an alkyne. So importantly, we are increasing the S character. Remember that this carbon position is sp hybridized. And that means that the S orbital makes up about 50% of that hybridization. Whereas this carbon is sp2 hybridized, meaning that this S character is about 33%. And for an alkyl carbon hydrogen, this is sp3 hybridized at this carbon position, which means that the s character is only about 25%. So as we're increasing the S character from 25% to 33% and then 50% for this carbon, this is going to make this hydrogen much more acidic and therefore more likely to be deprotonated by a base. In fact, the pKa value of this carbon hydrogen atom is going to be about 25, which is considerably lower than an alkene or an alkane hydrogen. So since this terminal hydrogen is much more acidic, it can be deprotonated by relatively strong bases. So importantly, a base can come in and abstract one of these protons, leaving behind a carbanion. And that carbanion has a very specific name, and now we have created a nucleophilic carbon position. This nucleophilic carbanion has a very specific name. It's called acetylide ion. So this is the acetylide ion, and now it is nucleophilic at this carbon position. And now that we've created this acetylide ion, it can do things like substitution reactions, which you would have learned about in organic chemistry, specifically doing SN2 type reactions. So if we have a primary alkyl halide, we can do an SN2 reaction where these electrons will come and attack this electrophilic carbon and the leaving group halide, in this case an iodide, would leave, generating a brand new carbon-carbon bond, which again is incredibly powerful in terms of organic chemistry because it's very difficult to make carbon-carbon bonds. This is the overall reaction or transformation known as alkyne alkylation. We introduce a base, typically sodium amide or NaNH2, and this base can deprotonate the terminal hydrogen position, creating that carbanion where the intermediate would look like this, where the carbon has a lone pair and has now become negatively charged. And from here, this will do a substitution reaction, specifically an SN2 at this carbon position, kicking off the iodide to give us our overall transformation known as alkyne alkylation. And it will be important for you to be able to identify where this reaction is taking place so that you can start to use it in your overall multi-step synthesis reactions. And this gives us an opportunity to extend carbon chains. So notice that this carbon chain had one, two, three, four, five carbons, and yet the product has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. So we can see clearly that the synthon for this, or the junction point, is between carbons five and six. So if you needed to work backwards in a retrosynthetic analysis, you could identify that there was a position where you started with an alkyne, and the other piece must have been a two carbon chain where here there was some halide like iodide, for example. Importantly, this alkyne was also probably generated using 
using the same type of alkyne alkylation. Because notice that here we have our alkyne with a carbon chain attached to it, so it's possible that the starting material for this also contained that junction point where we extended this carbon chain. And again, if we were to work our way backwards using retrosynthetic analysis, that might mean that our starting material contained three carbons because we had one, two, three, and this one has one, two, three as well with another halide on it, and the other reactant might have been acetylene, which is just this carbon-carbon triple bond. Now let's try a practice problem to see if you can put it all together. This is a typical exam type question, so pause the video, try it independently, and then resume the video to check your answers. In this question, you were told to propose a synthesis for this molecule using this as your starting material. And again, this is a very common exam type question. For our reactant, we have a one, two, three, four carbon chain, whereas on the product side, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chain. Therefore, it's likely we need to form a new carbon-carbon bond. And in this video, you learned about one of the most powerful ways to do so in organic chemistry, which is known as alkyne alkylation. We also see that we have to add two different bromine atoms to this molecule, and we only know a few ways to do that as well. Specifically, we can do things like take an alkene, add bromine gas to it, and then that would generate a dibrominated alkane. So that is likely to be one of the reactions that we need to utilize in this synthesis. What's more is that we see that we have this very specific and unique orientation for this alkane. And importantly, you have likely learned about the reaction using Lindler's catalyst to do hydrogenation of alkynes into Z alkenes. And again, that reaction is where you take some alkyne that's got two different substituents coming off either carbon, and you do a reduction in which you end up with a Z alkene, meaning that these substituents are on the same side. That's the trick I use to keep that in mind. Z means that the substituents are on the same side of the alkene. So I can use retrosynthetic analysis to figure out the pathway that we got there. So importantly, remember, I know that if I'm going to add two bromine atoms, trans to one another, that the reaction was likely bromination of some alkene, which means that my starting alkene must have already looked in this orientation, and I was adding bromine gas to it. So this is a bromination reaction where they would add trans to one another. Additionally, remember that the reaction that forms this Z alkene is reduction of an alkyne using Lindler's catalyst. So that means that the previous synthon for this, or the reaction starting material that must have existed previous to this one, is one in which this alkene was previously an alkyne. So that means that this is the alkyne, and then you have two carbons coming off of each side, which means that this was likely the starting material. And notice that the reaction that could have led us to this product is one that allows this to be the starting material. So importantly, the backwards reaction, which I'm indicating with these arrows, could have been just separating this portion. And in this video, you've learned about alkyne alkylation, where you could turn this alkyne into one with this other ethyl group coming off the side. So now that we've identified that pathway retrosynthetically, we can now move in the forward direction, where the first step is going to be deprotonation of that terminal alkyne hydrogen using sodium amide. That is going to generate that terminal alkyne carbanion because we've deprotonated that hydrogen. So therefore, this would be the pr product of that transformation. And then we can do an alkylation reaction by introducing a primary alkane alkyl halide. So this is going to do the substitution reaction to extend the carbon chain by one, two carbons, which is what we need on this side of the alkyne. So the product of that transformation is going to be an alkyne, where now we look just like this. And from here, we can do that reduction of an alkyne to an alkene using hydrogen and Lindlar's catalyst. So Lindlar's catalyst is the one that specifically allows us to make Z alkenes. And therefore, the product of this transformation is going to be that alkene. And now we're just one step away from our final product because all we need to add is bromine gas to do this transbromination. So notice how important the first step of deprotonating the alkyne to do an alkylation reaction is in extending the carbon chain. This gave us two additional carbons. And that's really the power of alkyne alkylation reactions because it provides an organic chemist an opportunity to extend the carbon chain. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions related to today's video or anything else related to organic chemistry. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another video. I'll see you next time.